In times like these everyone lacks hope, purpose and salvation. As a result, humanity is subject to its sinful nature, chasing depravity and abolishing all sense of decency, believing that this might fill the emptiness they have in their lives. Whether it may be adultery, seeking fame on social media, or striving for riches. All these bring no fulfillment and leave one with a bitter aftertaste. However, every human has hope, purpose and a salvation and that in only Jesus Christ. He sacrificed himself for our sins so that we may have the salvation which is eternal life in heaven. But not only this. In him you will find hope for the future. Because we Christians know that all things work together for good to them that love God. If you accept these facts, you are equipped to lead a purposeful lifestyle in Christ. May Jesus Christ bless you in your walk. At home, I beg you, mom and dad, husband and wife, family, I beg you, make Jesus Christ the head of that household. Make Jesus Christ the head of that, of that household. If you see that you have failed in your life, then go back and check and see what you have done. Where are you now in relations to Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Because you will trace it back to one thing and one thing only. You must have walked away from the Lord. That's why the household is no longer held together. Because the one who builds is the Lord. The one who protects is the Lord, not your intelligence, not your wisdom, not your strength, not your wealth. It is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, period. When Christ is missing in your marital life, your marital life ends up missing. It is the Lord. I remember very well as if it was yesterday. This couple came who were married for 10 years. And they said, we want to see you, Bishop. I said, welcome. Where is the chocolate? So I can throw it over you and say, <laughs> they came and they said, Bishop, we want to get a divorce. I said, hallelujah. <laughs> Great news. Please sit down. And I looked at, the, at my daughter and I said, would you like to start? Open up. She started talking, 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 talking. <laughs> when people talk, I like to listen. I want to be focused. She finished. I said, son, it's your turn now. He spoke, he spoke, he spoke, he spoke, he spoke, he spoke. Two and a half hours. I'm just listening. Two and a half hours. I didn't say nothing. I didn't move. Two and a half hours. After two and a half hours, I said to both of them, Are you finished? I said, yes. Are you sure, daughter? Nothing in the uh, cupboard, in the drawers. You've forgotten something in the corner, behind the door. Anything? No. She emptied herself out. You, 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 you. And him, you, 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 and your mother. <laughs> Poor mother-in-laws. They cop it left, right, and center. Finished, finished. I said, you have spoken for two and a half hours and you were nothing but a noise pollution. You gave me nothing but a headache. You didn't even bring a box of Kit Kat so I can have a break. <laughs> have a Kit Kat, have a break, have a Kit Kat. <laughs> the good old ads on TV. Have a Kit Kat, have a break. All right, I said, all these two and a half hours, I was waiting and I was hoping to hear one thing, but unfortunately I'll say this to both of you, my beloved children, I did not hear it coming from neither of you, the name of Jesus Christ, the crown of our heads and of our glory. I said, this is your problem. Don't blame him, my daughter. Don't blame her, my son. Don't blame your mother-in-law. Don't blame no one. I'll ask you this. My daughter, did you choose this man freely, willingly? Nobody forced you to marry him? She said, no, I chose him. 
my son, did you marry this girl freely with your own freedom? Nobody forced you? No. I said, daughter, when you came and chose your future husband, did anyone tell you you are marrying a saint? She said, what? I said, yeah. Open your ears. Did anyone tell you you are marrying a saint? She said, no. I said, son, did anyone tell you you are marrying a saint? He said, no. I said, then both of your heads bash him against the wall. <laughs> did anyone say to you, daughter, he's perfect? Or did anyone say to you, she is perfect? So why are you complaining now? Why are you saying she is this and she is that? And he is this and he is that. None of you are perfect. Then shut up. But you know what? What you are missing is the perfect one in your life. The perfect one. That makes you perfect in him. Covers your errors. Fills up the blanks of your life. Completes your lackness. I did not hear anything about Jesus. I looked at the face of my daughter. I said, how often do you go to church? I can see it in your face. Be honest. She said, father, maybe like uh, once every four months i said hum, 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 hum. <laughs> in assyrian we say <laughs> ash on your head i said my son don't even talk i can see you you've you haven't gone to church for ages he said i don't remember the last time up i know i know i can see i can see you mm -hmm. I got eyes here, eyes here, radar. I said, you bring the Lord Jesus into your life. This is the promise I'll give both of you. Bring the Lord Jesus into your life. You will never see my face for a divorce ever again. They both got up, put their hands together. They said, Father, pray over us. They never divorced. Never. We need the Lord. We need the Lord at home. Not just in the church. The church is the end of the road, not the beginning. If you think when you go to church on Sunday or whenever the occasion is, you think this is the beginning of no that's the end the beginning of the road to christ is home home turn your homes into a church where you worship the lord at home learn from joshua joshua son of Nun, barnon what did he say but for me and my household we worship the Lord. We choose to worship the Lord, me and the family. We worship, we choose to worship Him. And John Chrysostom, this mighty saint, the patriarch of Constantinople in the fourth century, he says, if you wish to see the kingdom of God on earth, see a family that worships Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is the kingdom of God in the making. So what do you think the kingdom of God is? Family. Family getting together, worshiping God. This is the kingdom of God. When the family worships the Lord, you are living in the kingdom of God. When the husband and the wife call the children and say, let's sit and pray before we eat. Let's bow and pray and read the Holy Bible together before we go to sleep. That is family. And what does the Western world and what has the Western world been doing for centuries, for decades, destroying family? Because they are focusing on individualism, not family bond. Teaching youngsters to leave home because you're an adult now, 16. 16 to me is a baby, a baby. What do you know about life? Please, my son, my daughter, 
don't misunderstand me. You are too young to know how to decide for yourself. This bead did not go white that easily. Did not go white that easily. I've been there, son, Dora. I've been there. Heaven and hell I've been. Both. I've seen hell and I've seen heaven. I've seen the Lord and I've seen Satan. I can show you. I've seen it both. This outfit doesn't make you a servant of the Lord. It's the heart. But this outfit is to serve the people of the Lord. That's all. But unless you know the Lord, how are you going to serve Him and His people? You need to know Him. You need to build a relationship with Him. Heaven is beautiful. Hell is ugly. We can't stay there for a split second. You cannot. Oh, Satan is very ugly when he comes. He's my king. He's my king. I pray all of us make it to heaven. But take your family with you when you go. Don't go alone. Because love embraces all. Love is not selfish. Love shares with everyone. So take the family with you. And we will have this beautiful meal with the Lord Jesus forever. Just, just imagine this for a moment. You're in heaven and then you see the Lord walking up to you. The son of righteousness, S-U-N. The son, S-U-N, of righteousness. The king of all kings and the lord of all lords, dressed up in his majestic outfit, comes and says, my child, come and sit next to me. Or actually, he'll go a step further than that. He'll say, come and sit in my place. That's what the book of Revelation says. When he sees us walking in, he'll get up and welcome us all and says, take my seat. Wow. And he will bow and serve us. Not only he served us on earth, but he will serve us in heaven. Now that is a much more difficult to fathom. Because on earth we saw him a human and there we saw him, we'll see him in his glory. In his glory is totally different. John the Beloved, who used to put his head on, 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 on the Lord's chest while on earth and, and feel and hear the beats, the heartbeats of the Lord without fainting, without being afraid. When he saw him in heaven, he fell on the ground as if he were dead. Why, John? You were not afraid. You put your head on his, on his chest while on earth. He said, yes, but I saw him a human like me. But in heaven, this is not the Jesus I got used to. I saw him glorious. He is awesome. I am so afraid. I couldn't ha hold on. I couldn't get myself together. I fell on the ground before his feet as if I were dead. When he is in his glory, he will still get up and serve us. And you want to give this up for a lustful moment in the pig's field of this world? You want to lose this eternity for some drugs, some Star City Casino, some room in a hotel overlooking the Darling Harbor? What are you doing, son? What are you doing, daughter? What are you doing? Where are you going? Where? Come back. Come back to the Lord. Stop fighting over pleasures, lustful things, materialistic things. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. 